I like that one. Uh, then we're in the process of creating a World University Online. Uh, we have uh, here in Virginia a nonprofit organization called the Institute on World Problems that works with WCPA. Laura's on the board of that uh, um, institute. And uh, uh, we're, we're uh, going to be offering courses online. Right? And courses, uh, 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 and our instructor is Eugenia, who's out there, uh, just outside. There's, there's Eugenia, uh, she's done a lot of teaching, and she's also uh, quite, uh, has uh, educational experience in creating curricula for various levels of uh, students. And uh, one of the things we've done is uh, we've got uh, educational organizations in India who are asking for curricula for each grade level, uh, starting with the first, right up through the, uh, graduating from high school. And they want, they want us to give them materials that they can introduce to students that, that uh, depending on their level, that uh, show them the need for world government and uh, the Earth Constitution. So here's part two, the campaign for ratification, the Earth Federation. It's called the Earth Federation Movement. Uh, and uh, every chance we get, every place we get, and all the uh, people we're in contact with around the world, the number one goal has to be the movement toward ratifying this Constitution. And we saw yesterday that it's uh, Article 17 gives three stages by which this can be done. And uh, it, it specifies the concrete ways that this can be done. So there's a methodology there for making that happen under Article 17. And we, uh, so everybody that's connected with WCPA worldwide uh, is encouraged to understand that methodology, to uh, um, get signatories to the Earth Constitution, to promote the ratification of it. Uh, this uh, is, uh, this is a, that, a, a depiction of that card that's over there on the table. That on the one side of the card it gives ten values. And the argument is that these ten values, not a dialogue for mutual understanding, nonviolence, respecting human rights, democratic laws, compassion and kindness, unity and diversity, justice making, sustainability, and global education, all of those values are not only there in the Earth Constitution, but they're only going to be successful worldwide. We'll only really have nonviolence worldwide, dialogue directed toward understanding worldwide, democratic laws worldwide if we ratify the Constitution. So they're all interconnected. Uh, and the reason why it's up here under the campaign for ratification is that we, it's cheap, right? It's cheap to make that card. Much more expensive to make the brochure and so on. So everywhere we go, we hand that out to mass audiences, right? Even if I have 600 people in the audience, I have people handing this card out to everybody and so on. Uh, so it gets the word out, isn't it? And that's why this is a, was a mass audience that we had. I was not one of the speakers at it, but I, uh, we had a delegation there uh, in Tikwapaya, Bolivia, uh, last June. Uh, this was a conference on a world without borders and world citizenship in direct response to the what the... Uh, so-called Elba countries of Latin America consider to be U.S. imperialism, which is just the opposite of world without borders and world citizenship. It's response to Trump's border wall and the U.S. interference with Venezuela, which is trying to create a democratic socialist order, and the U.S. says this is dangerous, we don't want this. And so uh, the uh, president of Bolivia, Evo Morales, called for, the, he invited the nations of Elba and the people of Latin America to this 
conference on the World Without Borders, there were thousands of people there. This, this auditorium was just packed with people, and they had, they had speakers who were presidents or past presidents of a number of Latin American countries, and people from Europe were there, every Latin American country would, had representation there, and so on. So we passed out hundreds and hundreds of those flyers to people, in, in, in Spanish, in, that case, in the case of this. So that's what we're doing, and it gives, uh, you know, it gives the, uh, on the back of this card, it gives uh, the basic uh, tenets of the Earth Constitution and the websites where people can go and sign up and so on. So there's, there's part two is over. Part, part three is, uh, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, Article 19, the last article of the Earth Constitution, gives us the right and the duty to start it now, right? To do it now. And this is this is not something that's unprecedented in history, right? All the time, people, uh, when there is a conflict over who the government is, if you go back in history, you see this is happening many times. Uh, the people who say this government that's now there is illegitimate, they start their own, right? And they get prominent people to come and they, say, they start organizing method, methods of making decisions and so on, democratic voting and the rest of it. And that's what, uh, that's what we're doing for the earth, right? The governments of the earth, I argue this, I've been arguing this for long time, and it's also in my new book, and I'm not the only um, philosopher that has argued this, the governments of the earth are not and cannot be legitimate any longer. Even if they were democratic, which the United States is not, it's run by an oligarchy of super rich, even if they were democratic, they cannot be legitimate if legitimacy is defined as serving the common good of their people. And that's in much democratic theory, going back to John Locke and the early theorists of democratic theory, that was what made government legitimate. Uh, Locke says unless government protects human rights and uh, uh, protects the population with uh, impartial judges and so on, it, it's not a legitimate government, and the people have the right and duty to overthrow it. That's what Thomas Jefferson put in the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and no government on earth is illegitimate, is legitimate any longer, because the common good of the planet, it, we're now aware, since the 20th century, includes peace and a protected planetary environment. The war system of the planet, uh, almost every single nation on earth is militarized, wasting their money and, and messing up the environment and detracting from our ability to save this planet from climate collapse. Right? And every uh, nation on the planet, even Costa Rica, which has no military, uh, cannot Costa Rica has 30% of its territory in protected areas because they're very environmentally conscious. But even if they were perfectly environmentally sustainable in Costa Rica, and they're not because they still use fossil fuel there, they, they can't uh, serve the common good of their people because the global environment is collapsing. And they're going, you know, everybody in Costa Rica is going to be suffering because everybody in the world is suffering because of this. So, so the, the common good has now shifted to the planet. Unless we have government that can, that can uh, 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 provide a common good for everyone on the planet, there's no one on the planet that's going to have their common good served, their human rights served. So there's three generations of human rights. The first generation came from the 18th century, and that was our political rights to uh, assembly and freedom of speech and habeas corpus and uh, uh, um, all these uh, political rights that are there in the first ten amendments of the uh, U.S. Constitution. 
The 19th century saw the development of the second generation of human rights, right? Economic and social rights. Everyone has a right to health care. Everyone has a right to social security in the event of old age and so on. Everyone has a right to limited hours of work, to safe conditions of work, right? All these things, everyone has a right to clean water and so on. These are the second generation rights that the socialists work so hard to get into uh, our consciousness and it has succeeded. The UN Declaration of Human Rights includes both those. It includes the, the political rights and it includes, for example, in Article 25, the right to social security, health care, uh, uh, education, all these rights are there in the UN Universal Declaration of Rights. But, but that was a document that came out in 1948, before the end of the 20th century, when all over the world people began to realize that we have a third generation of rights, which is the right to peace and the right to a sustainable environment that can support our lives. Without those, the other two generations of rights are worthless. So, so uh, provisional world government, right? We're in our understanding of what we're doing. This is more legitimate than any nation, than any existing government. Right? So we're we're setting up government, and we're saying that the, you know, come look at this because this is your legitimate government for the world. This protects all three generations of your rights. No nation on earth can do that unless they join the Earth Federation, and when, in which case they become legitimate because then they're recognizing that there are global rights that everybody on the planet has. So uh, it says we can form preparatory commissions to lay the groundwork for activating the Earth Constitution. We can begin sessions of the Provisional World Parliament. We've done that. We can commence the world executive and begin activating the ministries of government. And I'll mention those, what we've done so far in a moment. Uh, today we primarily activated the Provisional World Parliament and the Collegium of World Judges. And we've done that. Um,